Hey Flosstube, this is Kim, aka Spartan Stitcher on Instagram, and I am back again with another weekly cross stitching update. This is video number 65. Today is the 20th of April. We're uh, three quarters of the way through April. That means it's almost time for Mania, so I'll be talking about that later in my video. Um, for anyone new joining us because you're like me and you're watching lots of Mania videos, welcome. Um, just real quickly, I'm a stay-at-home mom, a veteran of the Air Force of seven and a half years. My husband is still active duty. He's deployed and uh, has been since for six months now. Um, today is actually the day that his replacement was supposed to arrive where he was at. And they'd have a week of overlap and then he would come home a week from now. But that's not happening. Uh, because of the pandemic so uh, we're still not sure when he is going to come home the Secretary of Defense is supposed to sign an extension to the stop movement order today to extend it to 30 June um, however they the article that I read unofficial article before the order had been signed uh, said that they would be approving more exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis I know they are approving commanders to do deployment swap outs, but my husband is not a commander. Um, he does have a pretty high job within the, the place where he's at, but it's not a commander job. So, uh, needs to say he can't come home until his replacement gets here, gets there. And so his replacement has to get approved to go out there. And then even if he did, they, um, he would spend 14 days in quarantine before he could start his job do the week overlap, and then my husband would have to get approval to come back. Um, so no idea when that's going to happen, if his exception would be approved, but they are definitely going to look into it. Otherwise, if it's not approved, it could be months yet before he's gets home. Um, and so my two daughters and I are just sitting at home. If you hear them running around the house, we've already done our homeschooling for the day. So they are uh, enjoying themselves, having fun. So let's talk about stitching. Um, last week when I talked to you, I told you that I had hardly stitched over the weekend and that I read a lot. And the only time I was stitching that over that weekend was in the evenings after my girls had gone to bed. Well, this past week, it, I did the same thing for two, I think three days. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I did the same thing. And um, it just took me that time to get out of my funk because it's kind of a, a cyclical thing where you're in a funk and you don't feel like stitching, but then it's hard to get out of the funk because you just feel like you're not getting anything done and, and you're not feeling better because you're not stitching, but yet you need to pick up that stitching to actually start feeling better. Um, but I got out of my funk. Um, I was working on Trick or Treat by Randall Spangler. This is the one that I'm doing uh, the most used color, which is black, extreme cross country first before I switch to a page, to page by page. And I was right about here. Um, I So in this middle row of pages, you could, I was working on this bottom of, uh, right here and then the teeny tiny corner of this railing on this little step out section and so for those first three days i was only in the evenings because i do tent stitch it goes faster and it's all black i was getting five to six hundred stitches for those three hours before um between when my girls went to bed and when i went to bed and then it increased and increased and increased it's the only piece i worked on this week because I was getting out of my funk, I was seeing the progress, I was happy with the progress, so I just kept working, and then, then you know, it was like, okay, finish the row of pages, and then set the goal higher, let's finish the park, and then set the goal higher, let's finish the next row of pages, and so here we are. Um, seven days of working on this piece, I got the 8,000 tent stitches that I needed, uh, for the Park and Full Coverage Fanatics National Park Challenge, where it's uh, 4,000 stitches, full cross stitches per park, or 8,000 tent stitches. So 
I did one complete park in a week um, and then some almost 400 stitches more on top of that last night to uh, finish the row so I got one row like I was halfway through this row I finished that row and then I did a whole nother row of pages um, so almost 8400 10 stitches and right now I have the scroll frame taken apart so I can show you show you what it looks like this is on 28 count or 20 25 count easy count um, I do continental tent stitch so take the long diagonal on the back let me this is gonna be hard to show the whole thing I might have to move my chair back okay so I was like here and right here so I did where my hand is all of this across the tree and then you can probably see my, my blue marks where the pages are um, that whole row on top of it so I won't be able to show the whole thing at once but I will scroll up for you I can kind of look through the fabric and see you Ugh. and there's the bottom so that is the entire thing so far I believe I have about 9400 more black stitches to go in the remaining three rows of pages and you can see my blue mark up here that's where the top corner is gonna be um, and the other thing I did when I got the first row finish is I changed how this was on my quantum frame um, I've spoken before in a previous video about the tip that I saw from Deb of AZ, AZ Needleworker it's her floss tube her tip was to uh, use your fabric border and sew a pocket um, onto the fabric and stick the dowel through like it's a, like it's a curtain rod so that's how my um, fabric is now attached so there's a pocket in there I usually do a three inch border and that was enough for the size dowel um, so plus I had a little bit extra just because the easy count even though you do a three inch border all the way around it could be slightly less on one side just to make it match up where the squares are so I just used a simple straight stitch on my sewing machine made the pocket stuck the dowel in and it is now in there I did the same thing with kindred spirits which is on the same size frame and I also tried it on uh, super size color expansion museum shelf which is my homemade PVC frame and I'll talk about that when when you see it but this works great um, now I don't have to worry about my fabric slipping I don't have to put extra fabric in there to keep it tight and it's doing well now I gotta move it back down so I will um, and I posted better pictures of this in Full Coverage Fanatics if you're a member of the group. Um, so there's where Trick or Treat is. Um, I did not, I'm sorry, I'm trying to fix this bottom doll. Uh, I did not get tired of black over the entire week just because, yes, it was the only color I worked with this week, but I got to see all of that appear as I, as I was going along. And the last two days that I worked on this, I bested my own personal record and number of stitches I got done. This still isn't centered on the dowel, so I'm just going to put it down and fix it later. Um, anyways, I beat my own personal record on number of stitches per day. Not that I was really trying for the record, I was just trying because my week started out slow in my progress. I was trying to make up for it so my new record in 10 stitches is 2040 in a day um, 
And I know that if we weren't in a lockdown situation, quarantine, that would be harder to get on other days. I could have actually done more if I had pushed myself more, but I didn't want to burn out either. So that is my new record. So that's the only thing I worked on this week. Um, I am going to put it down for now, which means I am changing what piece I'm working on this upcoming weekend for um, the Easter Egg Weekend Challenge in Full Coverage Fanatics, as well as Jessie Marie's birthday, uh, shortest birthday sale. Um, so, let's talk about what I'm going to work on this week before we get to Mania. Oh, and that park that I finished was uh, Hawaii Volcanoes, which also means I'm now done with Tier 2 of the National Parks Challenge in Full Coverage Fanatics. So I have 10 parks done, and we'll get, we'll get lots more started here soon. So this week, I told you last week that I was probably going to work on the black work. Obviously, that didn't happen. So now I have to catch up on my... Peppermint Purple, 52 Weeks of Black Work Sal. I believe we're now... I think I have three weeks to catch up on, and the fourth will come out on Wednesday, if I'm right. So, um, I have to add three or four more blocks by the time I see you next Monday. Um, and this is... Cauldron, I believe. Where's my... Um, this is Cauldron Cotton from the Halloween uh, surprise box. Cauldron Bubble 32 Count Jubilin Color Cotton is the fabric. And then uh, flosses are just things I picked myself. Some of them are from the Halloween box and some of them are unmarked from my grandmother. And then the other thing I'm going to work on this week, because of my mania plans, um, I usually work on Big Red Ship of Life about three days every single month as my four-year project to represent our time here in North Dakota. Um, but just like last year, I didn't work on this in May. So I'm not going to work on it in May this year, which means I have to do, um, I usually do one page every three months. So now I'm going to have to do one page still in the time frame of three months but one of those months i'm not working on it so when i work on it this week i'm on the second row of pages right around here so i just finished these two guys so i'll be working right around here um i have to do half the page this this week so that i can do the other half the page in june and still keep on my timeline so that's what I'll be working on. I'll show you where I'm at. This is 28 count mushroom even weave by MCG Textiles. This is the one I started the fabric in the wrong orientation. I'm using DMC 3808. So this is the four pages I did last year and the one page I've done in the first quarter this year. <coughs> so I will start and hopefully get half the page done um, this week. So this is one over one over 28 count. So that takes me takes me a little bit more time. So we'll see how much I can get done this week on that. Not as much fun doing, you know, almost a week on this. At least Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we'll see how much I can get done in four days. And then I have the Easter egg challenge. And the black work doesn't take hardly any time at all. So Easter egg challenge in full coverage fanatics. There are four different themes. It's a non-counting challenge. You can, you can fit one of the themes. You can fit two of the themes. You can work on one whip. How many whips that fit those four themes. Tell a story. Be creative and um, just show us your progress in one post. So I was gonna work on Trick or Treat because the themes were um, small fuzzy animals, which there was black cats in that piece, uh, something sweet. So they were trick or treating for candy, 
plus they were sweet kids. The other themes are flowers and um, colors during Easter, whatever hemisphere you happen to be in. So spring colors if you're in the northern hemisphere, fall colors if you're in the southern hemisphere. But now I have to switch pieces, and I told you I was going to go back to Super Size Color Expansion Museum Shelf because it is also my piece for uh, Full Coverage Fanatics Around the World Challenge this month. We're in Egypt, so I'm working on this piece for Egypt. I'm also making it fit for the Easter Egg Challenge because there are spring colors in there. There are flowers for something sweet. I think it'd be pretty sweet to go go see this museum, don't you think? I really enjoy museums. That'd be sweet. But like I said, tell a story. And there's not really any small fuzzy animals. I don't think the dinosaurs would count on that one. Um, and the knight's horse isn't small, but it is fuzzy. So anyways, I fit the theme a couple different ways. So I'm going to be working on this piece, and this is the one where I started down here in the corner. I am um, not doing this outer gold frame. So I'm here in the dinosaurs, and I got the page finish here. And so now I'm working on this page with the stegosaurus in the rock, the book with the mastodon, and the T-Rex tail. So there's where I am right now. I'll work on this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the Easter Egg Challenge. And when I did um, Deb's tip for this PVC, um, it was really close on this lower edge just because the PVC is thicker, it's much bigger in diameter than the dowel. Um, but I barely had enough room. I'll show you my back. I don't care how my backs look. It's upside down right now, but um, you can see I barely had enough room with the spare fabric to uh, sew the pocket. So there's your, your pocket that's sewn. I did not lock off my threads because I want to be able to take this out eventually. Um, so there's your pocket. The PVC is in there. What I didn't think about when I was doing this is that once I got both the top and the bottom through, which the, the top was easier, and I, I rolled up this top piece, and then I was attaching my side pieces, the instant I touched this fabric, it came off, it like unrolled, because I had this attached beforehand with Q-snap clamps. Well, now it was just in there like a curtain rod, and if you roll a curtain rod, it just, it, yeah, it doesn't uh, turn as much once I, once I fit these tight sides, but it wasn't enough. So I unrolled it, and it's on there like the curtain rod, but it also has the Q-snap clamps on the top to provide more tension. And then I was able to roll it up as tight as I could and kind of just you know, pull on it, pull on the fabric to make sure the roll was tight so that once I attached the sides, um, the tension was pretty good. I don't have my side tensioners attached right now, and you can see the tension is pretty good. And that's just from wrestling with it and trying to tighten up this top roll as much so that I could um, attach the sides. Anyways. That's boring. You don't want to hear about that. Um, mania. My mania plans. I thought about all different kinds of things. I considered all, all different ideas. I really liked uh, Emma from Stitch M's idea of May We Finish is what she did last year uh, working on FFOs. I liked um, Stephanie from Lindy Stitches, her idea of a Stitch Sania where you work weekly goals on a larger project and if you hit it then you have one start on the weekend. I thought about doing one small start every week and if I get it done start to finish then I can do another start just because I only have one finish so far for 2020. In the end I was looking at my goals for
for the year, the number of page finishes I have, and um, how many page full coverage page finishes I want to do. And you know, last year I did page finish mania. And not knowing what's going on with my husband, I said, I'm just going to stick with what I know that works for me. And I really want my hit my annual goals. So I'm going to do another page finish mania. It's going to be all full coverage in May, except for the first couple days I will work on the familiar sale with ever, whatever Brittany releases as the May familiar, uh, the catalog of which is familiar. So I will work on that. And then the entire rest of the month is going to be full coverage to try to get as many page finishes as I can. Now, the way that I've been stitching my full coverage this year, I don't have as many pages in work closer to a page finish is that I just happened to have last year. Uh, you can go back and look at my videos and, and see how many pages I got done. Um, it was like bam, bam, bam. I was getting pages done. And then um, it's, it's not something that I purposefully try to set up my whips so that I can get a whole bunch of pages done in May. That's not the point of it. I want to, um, it's, it's not to set myself up for success. It's just to um, sprint on my full coverage pieces and see how many page finishes I can do. Now, because of the National Park Challenge in Full Coverage Phonetics, that means I'm going to be starting a whole bunch of parks because I want all my pieces, to, all my stitches to count towards parks. And then throughout the rest of the year, I'll finish off those parks, um, which is one reason why we made it. So it doesn't matter. You can do the parks out of order. You can do, you know, all the parks on one whip. You can split up as long as it's one whip per park. Unless you finish that whip, then you can finish the park on another whip. So when I work on this this weekend for Easter egg challenge, I'm going to be getting this, which is a full page and then the partial page closer to a finish so that hopefully I can finish both of these pages in May for page finish mania. So that'll be my goal this weekend is to get this easy closer to a finish for Warrior Mania. Leave that there. She's gonna watch it. Okay, the other pieces I made a list. I looked at it, all my whips, and out of my eleven full coverage pieces, one, two, three, four, five of them, I'm definitely going to work on, hopefully. And then there's two maybes. So um, for the Around the World Challenge. For full coverage fanatics in May, we're going to France. Beauty and the Beast has set in France. So I will be working on this one and aiming for a page finish, which should be fairly easy when I show you where I'm at. This is currently off the Q snap. I don't want to unroll it all the way. So there we are. Again, this is 25 count, easy count. Let me hold it up better so you can see where I'm at on that page. So that's that's and it's all tones of blue, so it won't take me that long to finish up his face and that bit of background because most of that page is background and, and not his face. So we'll try to get a page finish on Beauty and the Beast 2017. So that would be three pages so far. Uh, you already know if you watched my videos that uh, Half Blood Prince by Tilton Crafts, this is a sepia piece with 35 uh, colors this goes quickly and the next page is almost all background uh, it just barely touches the castle and that's where I'm at here so we're talking about right here 
that would be pretty quick to get the bead finish. And my last, let's see, that's no, not my last piece. I got two more. Friends Forever by Ann Stokes. I'm over here. And I'll show you the whole piece first. If I can hold it right. So there's where we are so far. My goal on this one is uh, four diagonal pages. So I'm switching to a diagonal method. You can see I've got all the black done down there and that is a partial page so there's a partial page right here and then a full page that i will work on in may it doesn't go this far out and i just keep going keep gritting as as much as i have the grid for and then the last piece that i'll work on is oh baby this is the one that i'm cropping so all this won't be stitched this is now a retired chart and um i don't have much of this page done but looking at at the pattern there is a lot of large chunks of color on this page which also i think there's a partial too so uh, where he, where his neck is, it gets really dark. There's really dark section where his mane comes down, and I'll show you the full pee full. So, and my goal on this one this year is just to finish that roll of pages, anyways. So mania could get me. To the goal on this one um, and just like last year I don't know how much I'm gonna get done these are all pieces I you know these are all possibilities for page finishes and then in the maybe pile um, trick-or-treat you know I can uh, when I'm going well I could get 8,000 stitches in four days if, if I'm going at my, my record rate of over 2,000 a day. And then the other piece I haven't worked on this year is um, the Star Wars... Let me grab it. Hold on, I'll pause you. Okay, this is the one I haven't worked on this year. Um, Star Wars Mystic Stitch. I started this um, New Year's Eve Eve, December 30th, and I only have a couple of rows done of black up here on page one. But, um, remember, there's like 84 colors in this. You can't, it doesn't seem like it, but there is. But a good chunk of that first page is black. So again, that's another maybe um, that I could work on. If I get through the other five pieces, I could either work on this or Trick or Treat. Since I've already started a, park, a second park on Trick or Treat. So that is my page finish mania, the pieces I will not be working on. Sunday Delight um, by Randall Spangler. I, last time I touched it at the end of last year, I finished a page, so I don't have any, any even bit of a page started. That would take too much to get through a page on that one. Um, Macintosh Mill, I'm not about to burn myself out on that piece when I'm shooting for a finish. Um, plus... It being a dimensions kit, there isn't really pages on it like there are the Hades and, and Tilton and Mystic charts. It's just one big piece, and I, I'm working on a half of it. Um, Kindred Spirits, I, just like Sunday, Sunday Delight, I just got a page finish on it, and I'm doing diagonal pages, so I'm starting in a whole different spot. There's nothing started on that page yet, and even though it's all background, um, there's quite a few different colors. So I don't plan on working on Kindred Spirits. Uh, that's Jody Bergma with um, the two horse heads. And then the last one I don't plan on working on is a Summer Ball. That is uh, the one that's <coughs> the scene out of 
Pride and Prejudice type, you know, dance scene. My goal for that one is the one page that I'm working on right now. But I don't plan on working on it because um, last year for Page Finish Mania, I worked on that piece for like 17 days out of May. Trying to get the page finished, which I got. But I got so sick of it because I was pushing myself so hard and it's full cross with fractionals and backstitch. And it just doesn't move as quickly because it's not art converted into um, full coverage like, like Hades and, and Tilton pieces. So those are the four pieces I don't plan on touching. Everything else is fair game. Um, it's one of those, you pick a piece and I you get the page finished and I'll, I'll pick pieces depending on how much time that I have left in May and what I'm feeling like. And um, so it'll be an adventure trying to see how many page finishes I can get in May. Um, no story today for, for those of you who may be uh, watching my channel for the first time. Being a uh, veteran and also a dependent, um, living on an Air Force base for the past six months while my husband's been deployed, I've been sharing stories from my Air Force time as well as I've got stories all lined up of his Air Force time and experience. And I usually end my videos with one of those Air Force stories. I'm not going to do that today. Uh, there's not just time and I know most people just want to hear about mania. Um, but if you want to subscribe and hear those Air Force stories, go ahead and uh, we'll talk about that next week. So everybody have a good stitching week and we'll see you later. Bye.